Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. Uh, it's good to see you all again. Um, I have a lot of information to share with you, um, quite a bit actually. Um, I think probably the best thing that I can do is probably just start with uh, the most recent and probably work my way backward. Um, just simply because I think the last time that we had made videos, I talked about the bulwark and the hedge of protection. And, uh, and I think the next one was the dream that I had about 3 a.m. Okay. Um, I did get a little bit more information and found a little bit more in regards to that 3 a.m. Um, and I put a link and a comment on that particular video. So if you guys want to go back and take a look at it, um, it does tie into the Cox Crow and kind of what that means. Okay. All right. So um, we'll catch up going through my journal as to things that the Lord has led me to and what he has brought um, to my attention since that time. But let's start with what happened last night because last night was pretty was pretty exciting and I want to be able to talk to you all about that um, and, um, and, and let's go into what some of this information is. Things are happening rapidly now and, um, and so there's a lot of information that's being put out and being, um, being shared with us um, and so I have a lot that I've been given that I've just not had the opportunity to come and bring forth to you. Um, all right, so let's start with what I heard last night. So now, last night I had a dream. And in my dream, um, I knew I was writing down a song. And um, it was a song that I was singing internally, okay? In my dream, I was not singing it. In my dream, I was writing it down and I was hearing it internally, okay? And I don't remember what the song was, but I know the song was one that I knew and I recognized. It was one like uh, like when you trip across an old song, you know, you might be listening to the radio and then all of a sudden you trip across a, a real old song and you're like, ah, that's an old song, I love that song. And you crank up the radio and you sing aloud to it. It was that kind of feeling with this song, like one I had not heard in such a long time that I wanted to turn up the volume and sing to. I was writing down the words that were coming from me eternally, okay? So I wasn't, in my dream, I wasn't singing it. It was coming from, uh, it was coming from inside, okay? I rolled over in the night, and when I awoke to roll over, I can't, I could not remember not one single word. I couldn't, I mean, it was taken from me that quickly. Um, but I'm going to tell you where my mind went. My mind went to two scriptures. First in Revelation 14 and then in Jeremiah 31. So let me pull those up right quick because let's talk about uh, Revelation 14. So Revelation 14 is um, verse 1. Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion. And with him the 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of the harpists playing their harps. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These, are, these were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the lamb, and in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Okay, so that was where my mind went in the middle of the night. That scripture popped into my mind. Even though I could not remember what the words of the song were, I knew that was the scripture that was there. And so um, I, di I didn't know that scripture 
word by word um, by heart, but I knew basically what it said. And so when I got up this morning and read that scripture, I thought, oh my goodness, um, <laughs> this is this is pretty exciting. And so um, and so the other scripture that I had in mind um, was about something being written upon our heart, and that led me to um, Jeremiah 31. So let me see if I can pull up Jeremiah 31 and read to you um, where um, my mind went on that. Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. That's where my, that's where my mind went. In the middle of the night, I had two scriptures pop up and that's what they were. And so when here I was in this dream, I was writing down, I was writing down the song and it was, um, in my mind, it wasn't, it, even though the scripture says it's a new song that we're going to sing, this is, in my mind, this is not a new song. This is not a new song. What came to mind was, the feeling was, it was an old song that I had not heard in a very long time. And it was one I wanted to crank it up and I wanted to sing it with my whole heart. It was, I wanted to sing it out, okay? So this song, what I have noted here, so this song is not new. It's an old song, one we've not heard in a long time, one we will know all the words to and will sing with all of our hearts because we love it and it's one of our favorites. It's written on our hearts, so to speak. And so, um, and so I thought that was real important. So now let's go back and look at Revelation 14 one more time, because what it says is they sang as it were a new song before the throne. They sang as it were a new song before the throne. So I said to myself, well, you know, when you hear one song that you hadn't heard so long on the radio and then you just hear it and you're like, oh, I just love that song, you know, <laughs> it brings back great memories. You just, you have the feeling it's like you're right back to where you were when you originally heard it. You guys know what I'm talking about. That was the feeling. That was the feeling that I had when I was writing down this song that was being sung internally in that dream. So guys, I wanted to bring that forth to you. So last night still, roll back over in the middle of the night and I hear this, two words, dress rehearsal. The words dress rehearsal. Now guys, I don't have to tell you what I thought of immediately. What I thought of immediately was the wedding. That's what I thought of immediately. But truly a dress rehearsal can be for several different things. What, what the other thing that came to mind was like when you're in, you know, when you're, you're in high school or college and you're, you're putting on a big, um, a big play, a, you know, a big grand production of some sort, you have dress rehearsals. You have dry runs that go through um, <clears throat> what it, you know, to, to, to see what kind of problems there's going to be. Um, a dress rehearsal. 
um, you know, a, a, a rehearsal dinner for the wedding is a, is is basically a dress rehearsal. You're you're going to walk right through it. People are going to learn what they need to do, what's going on, how they need to handle things, and um, and you know, and you find out where the pitfalls are, and you fix those right away, because you know, opening night is coming, right? The wedding day is coming. So there is a set time that we need to prepare for. And so the dress rehearsals are coming into that time. Okay? So let's let's read what I what I wrote here in my journal. Uh, we know that dress rehearsals can be for many things. Plays, for example, great productions have dress rehearsals. The question would be in the wedding or the plays, how far out are the dress rehearsals from opening night? or from the wedding how far out are they okay and so I tried to do some research in that because <laughs> you know that's kind of important don't you think is it the next day or or what you know um, if a dress rehearsal is 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 for a big calamity coming now let's think about it in terms of that if a dress rehearsal is in is in um, terms of a big calamity coming um, how much of the impact uh, does a dress rehearsal allow okay in our lives all right and so then the final question would be is the dress rehearsal for the transformation will the dress rehearsal be for the transformation um, I, I don't know I don't know because he's been pointing to all of these different things okay all right so you guys know um, let me let me just make myself a note here you guys know I had to look up the definition of what of what dress rehearsal is and so I did and um, and it says the final rehearsal of a live show in which everything is done as it would be in a real performance everything is done as it would be in a real performance and so you're going through all of the steps you're finding out exactly let's just say it's a dress rehearsal for a wedding then the bride the groom they know where they have to walk when they have to walk how fast how slow down the aisle um, you know how everything is going to happen as they get married with um, with the preacher um, you know where everyone's going to be standing how that's all going to be done how about the dinner the dinner before you know who's sitting next to who how you know what the agenda is going to be for the evening how everything is going to be done are the toasts ready is you know all of the all of the prayer what you know is everything done and so when we when we think about the dress rehearsal um, we think these are the details these are the final details that are being given to us instructions guidance as to getting through what is getting ready to occur okay so that was uh, definition number one definition number two was a practice exercise for something to come and the words that were given was dry run now guys I'm telling you we've talked about how the Lord works that he truly is our father he's a father figure and for those that have in their mind that he is a tyrant that he um, you know that he's he just wants to come and and kill and he just wants to you know control your whole life and 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 be a tyrant in your life is so completely uh, far out there that you know it, it doesn't it doesn't even align to who he is we we serve a God who is who is so full of loving kindness for us all and the love that he has for us you can't even you can't even measure it you can't even measure it I mean it, he is love he can't be anything but love and the things that he does he does because he loves okay and if you think about your parents 
And I'm not talking about unhealthy relationships or, you know, issues with, you know, things that happened in your life, but generally what a parent is and what a parent does in a healthy relationship. They prepare you, they help you, they teach you, they train you, they love you beyond anybody else in this world, okay? Um, they do. Our father is the same way. He's not going to let something come to us unaware. He's not going to push us out, you know, into the world and not help us, guide us, reach out for us, instruct us, um, hold our hand. He's told us that. And so this is no different. This is no different. We're getting ready to embark upon some really big things. And the Lord is going to make sure that we are ready. Okay? He's going to make sure. So heads up, guys. It's dress rehearsal time. Okay? Heads up. So my thought is this is just so like the Lord. I mean, this is so him. This is so him. I had to smile when I heard the words dress rehearsal in the middle of the night. I'm like, yeah, you know, that is just so him. And so, you know, as our father, he's going to make sure that we're ready, we're prepared and we're tested. Okay. It's like a full scale uh, practice. Now I work in public health preparedness. And so, um, and, and, and some of my friends are going to be watching this video who are my coworkers. They, they are, they understand what I'm getting ready to say when we say we have a full scale exercise, meaning that's everything incorporated and you are out doing an exercise and how, what we do in preparedness, um, especially for, um, for, you know, um, grand events, uh, let's just say, for example, what happened down in, in Texas with the Hurricane Harvey, you know, um, that that was a real life event. That's a real life incident that they had, but they had to train for it. And in order to train for that, they, they have different kinds of options on things that they can do to train for it. And, um, and you can start out with tabletop exercises, or you can start out with, you know, communication or mock or different things. And it excels all the way up to a full scale exercise, meaning you take several days and all of your people and resources, and you guys are moving through a scenario so that you can, um, figure out what some of the problems were, um, find out what some of the hitch the, you know, the glitches in the plans are for, you know, whatever event is coming up. And so, um, and so when I was reading some of the definitions and it said a full scale practice, I knew right then, oh, I get that, you know, in my mind, because of what I do, I get that, right? And so it means it's a full uninterrupted, okay, rehearsal, uh, exercise, practice. It's uninterrupted. It's going to go right on through and we're going to look and see at the end, Okay, what didn't we do right? What happened? Where did I fall? Where where were the gaps? Where were my weaknesses? What was going on with that? And so when we're looking at dress rehearsal and in the full aspect of what that means, then um, we need to look within ourselves and say, okay, where am I missing something? Okay, so it's just like when I saw all the folks, um, what they were going through down in Texas with Hurricane Harvey. Um, and I knew what resources they were going to need. I, I was talking with my husband about it and I said, okay, let's look at that, that, that particular, um, um, emergency, that particular incident that's happening there. These folks need this, 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 and this. And, and so I was trying to justify some of the things that, you know, we have been trying to do in the house that we have right now. Um, you know, to make sure that there were certain things that, that, that we needed to have. And then just kind of looking at it again and saying, okay, well, what don't we have? And um, what are we not ready for? You know, um, physically, are we ready? Resource-wise, are, re are we ready? Spiritually, are we ready? Emotionally, are we ready? Do we have a plan in place? Have we talked to our family and friends? Do they know you know, um, what's going on. And so he, even here in North Carolina, we have, um, we are under the threat of, uh, not, not only one hurricane Irma that could possibly come up into this direction, but, but another <laughs> as well. And, but, you know, in, in, on the Eastern seaboard, 
uh, the eastern coast of, of the United States, you know, we, we have a lot of, this is hurricane season. And so we're on a heads up alert for it, um, you know, between certain months. And so we watch for it. However, Irma is a, um, Irma is, a, is, is one that has been getting quite strong. And I do, um, I do, and I will include in the comments here, the Lord gave me a dream about, on July the 20th about a storm coming up from the south. Um, and I was trying to get home in enough time. And the timing that I had in the dream was uh, one, it was supposed to hit between 1.30 and 1.35. Um, it was supposed to hit between 1.30 and 1.35. Now, um, I, when I notated the dream down in my journal, um, I thought that was the timing of it hitting. Um, but it could possibly be the wind speeds, 130 to 135. And so um, I will share that dream in the comments of this particular video so that you guys can have that and take a look at it and, dis and dissect it. I will also share the dream interpretation that was provided for me um, uh, in regards to that if I can find it. So I will, I will, I will look for that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not at home. I, as you can tell what's behind me, I, I am in a different area right now. And so um, I may not be able to get my hands on the interpretation, but I will try and find it. Okay. So, um, so let, when I was looking up in regards to timing um, in re, for how long a dress rehearsal is, okay. Um, when I found uh, something about plays and productions, okay. Um, typically, uh, it says that the full un uninterrupted rehearsal in costumes, it, the only thing that I could find is that it was shortly before the performance. Um, I couldn't find any time frame. However, there probably is some type of a time frame. And when I was in um, uh, uh, plays and dramas and in the orchestras and that type of thing for some of the bigger productions, um, then... I, if I remember, it was something like a week before um, that, you know, they brought all of the actors and all of the musical people together to try and match up, you know, the music and the play and and go through and have all the all of all of the issues um, ironed out. And so um, all I found online was shortly before. That's all I found. Uh, but for weddings, I did find, um, you know, where it, it's helping people try to figure out, you know, scheduling for certain things like that. For weddings, it was a night or two nights before the wedding. Um, but, you know, guys, the only thing that I can tell you on this is that, you know, God's time is not our time. Um, but we're getting ready to go through a dress rehearsal. And so, um, and so heads up with that. Um, look deep within, make sure everything isn't, make sure this house is in order, okay, and make sure the physical house is in order. Um, and then when something comes up and arises, I don't know what it's going to be. I have no idea what it could be because I don't know what the dress rehearsal is for. Um, you know, is it for the transformation? Is it for a big calamity that's coming? Is it is it is it for the wedding? Is it what what could it be for? I I don't know. Um, how much of um, of an impact will we have to walk through to prepare us for what it what we're going th through the dress rehearsal for? So I I don't know. I don't know the answers to these questions. Um, they're the same ones that I'm going to be asking myself and praying over myself and asking the Lord to lead me through. So, um, so guys, heads up. That's that was just last night. the The rest of the information that the Lord is giving is just phenomenal uh, in regards to some of the other stuff. I mean, um, He's been talking about the convergence still, um, and I want to talk to you about the convergence just a little bit. Um, on 9-3, that was last night, uh, this was 9-4, this was 9-3 going into 9-4 about what I just told you today being September the 4th. Okay, the night prior, 
um, I rolled over and I heard this song and I only heard this part of the song, A Whole New World from, um, from Disney's Aladdin mood, movie. Um, I heard that, that particular um, wording, A Whole New World. And um, that's Okay, um, but then I had a dream, and it was it was about the merge. Um, it it was it was over us. It was on top of us. Okay, so um, remember. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a separate video. I'm gonna have to do a separate video because I'm gonna have to show you the merge. I'm gonna have to show you the merge. Um, I may not. I may. I may be able to come back and and just insert something into this video. Let me see if I can do that. But let me just talk. Finish talking to you about this. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think in my mind what is going to be the best way to do it. This is almost. Um, this is 26 minutes now. I think I'm going to end this video. And just go ahead and do another video and we'll be picking it up in regards to the merge and picking up uh, picking it up into regards to the dream that the Lord gave me um, yesterday and what he was showing me and some of the information that I did run across uh, in regards to this um, guys it's very very interesting it's 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 for me it's a it, it's it's almost overwhelming trying to identify exactly what it is but I think um, in some research through scripture, I may have tripped across a little bit about what it could be. Um, I will pray on that and ask the Lord what it is that he is wanting me to share at this time. But I will share the dream and go back to, um, I'm going to go back to the um, to the, the sketch of the dream that I've shared already from September of 2015 in regards to heaven and earth merging, if you guys remember that. Um, I'll be talking about uh, that particular one uh, upcoming. So guys, dress rehearsal, heads up, it's coming. Um, prepare yourselves. Let's just see what's getting ready to, uh, to occur now. I love you guys.